what people don't understand, again, not to talk shade to anybody else, but most people just do blanks. So they'll literally all have the same crew neck and put their stuff on there. Like piece by piece, we cuff these things up, made custom collars. I hate having like flimsy ass collars or like up here or down here that just don't like feel sturdy or they don't feel like substantial. And these things feel like substantial, you know? It's the spring drop. It's a little wintry out, but uh, live March 7th for y'all but if you want yeah i mean if you're trying to get involved march 6th the day before every drop or two days before every drop sometimes three days before every drop we give it to the discord crew only so if you want to get involved goodcompanydiscord.com or check the bio join the discord we're just chatting like-minded stuff we do some uh, exclusives here and there you get sneak peeks but you definitely get first dibs on all this so for those that complain or want me to bring restocks or don't have stuff in stock or you didn't get your size or color I, this is your option. That's your only option. Go to Discord, get it first. Um, this is my first time actually trying it on. Obviously, I designed it, but uh, it feels good, man. It's like not uh, super heavy, but it's not cold. Um, so it is somewhere in between like a T and a crew. It's a th it's a thinner French Terry crew that we designed for the spring. We got matching shorts. Um, calling it, you know, the basics. Just the bear. Everyone loves the bear. You can't really go wrong with the goodie bear. Um, sleek. You could dress it up if you really wanted. You could size down. This is an XL. I'm about five ten. And I'm 210 right now. Again, I'm 5'10, 210, Kyle's 6'5, probably about 220, and he's wearing the same size. Um, we made him a little bit longer so it fits kind of casual and baggy. And again, you can size down if you want to dress it up. You could easily throw this on with some khakis or something, a little date night. We don't get dates around here, but I hope you all do. So you could uh, shrink it up a little bit, or if you want to wear it baggy and comfy, this is kind of where I rock with it. And today we got Bench. Welcome to the video, man. Sound the mic, 3SB.co, good company, Third Street. A uh, little titty day. Abby's got a big pull. It's her last big pull before the Arnold. We're heading to the Arnold in three days. We're going to vlog there. Check it out. We'll be hanging out with a bunch of special guests. Hopefully, you guys will recognize and have a good time. Um, but let's get into the video. Let's get into the list. Everyone does reps, right? Obviously, people do time as well, right? They're like, oh, they're doing like, like mainly for CrossFit, like burpees, whatever the fuck, for time, which is kind of. Bodybuilding sometimes will do like a grab a 80% of your max on dumbbells and do it for 30 seconds. Okay. So that's where I'm going with this. As long as you don't stop the rep kind of thing. Yeah. Like, let's say you're doing a bench press, like you treat it on like a spoto, where it's like just do spotos for 45 seconds, yeah, yeah. even though your first rep's gonna be way faster than your last rep. Why is there no program like that, huh? Um, I feel like there's not a lot of written, but we used to do some accessories like that. Like we'd grab 80 pound dumbbells and you just, or, you know, rest pause. So you'd go until like, you save one in the tank, rack it, and then wait 30 seconds and go again. Kind of like super setting. Yeah, but with the same exercise and a, a, a semi, a sub max weight, we would do that same shit, but time. So you'd grab 80 pound dumbbells and you can't put them down, but you can pause anywhere, so you, but you gotta, you for, for a minute. And so you could like pause right here, but you better, people are screaming at you, you better keep going. It's a good way to get a pump. I don't know if it's a great way to progress the overload, but you'll get a fatty pump. If you do the math on your phone, right? Let's say you do 185 bench press times 12, and then you do 225 times six. There's obviously much more weight being pushed overall with 185 by six. Now, how close are you to failure? What if they're both the exact same close to failure? The idea is you would use both those weights and strategies to get progressive overload, right? Because say you're a more advanced lifter and you do 185 for, what'd you say, 12 or whatever, it doesn't really matter, 12 and it's RIR one, meaning you have one rep in the tank, but you, you're an advanced lifter or you've lifted consistently with nutrition and programming for three years. You won't be able to add a rep or set weekly. It's very difficult, right? Because you're an advanced lifter. 
what you would do then is that's where blocking out and programming would happen. So hopefully you would bench two or three times a week or whatever exercise, even if it's hypertrophy, and one day would be sixes, heavier, one day would be twelves, lighter, and then you could juggle that volume and progress on one or the other. The idea where it's becoming less popular to be strong, even if you're a bodybuilder, um, I think it's bad for the sport because, or bad for your progress, not really the sport, but it's bad because the stronger you can get, the more reps you can do. If you're hella strong at sixes, you're gonna be strong at tens. So you can get stronger at, at fours through sixes and still put hypertrophy there because you're hitting a certain muscle fiber type. And then you can get more volume and work in handling the tens and twelves. So eventually you do 195, 205, and 225 for tens as your strength goes up. What's your go-to snack while cutting? So I think the honest truth that might hurt a lot of y'all's feelings is if you're truly cutting, I don't think you should snack. Um, a lot of people say like, I'm gonna die and I'm gonna lose 10 pounds, I'm gonna lose 50 pounds, I'm gonna lose this or that, I'm gonna get lean this summer, I'm gonna get sub 15, 20% body fat, but then you never really fully commit. That's not to say that you can't snack, right? If you have three big meals and you have an apple and a shake in between each meal, yeah, you can get away with that. But the truth is, if you're getting enough protein and your calories, unless your activity is crazy high, we're not dieting or reaching our goals on 3,500 calories. And I don't care what other guru on the internet's telling you, oh, those people are dieting so drastically, it's, it's never gonna work and they're gonna rebound. And truth is to lose a significant amount of body fat for the majority of folks, except for the extreme cases, you're gonna have to diet on you know, 2,000, 2,500 calories or less. Again, depending on the activity, and so you don't have room to just slam snacks all day. On the internet, it's cool because everyone has a baseline of knowledge now that creates content. So everyone's talking about macros and they talk about meal timing and they can debuff myths. Like when we make y'all, y'all been rocking with me for a while. I know we got some newbies here too, but you know, we were talking about counting macros in 2013 and a lot of people didn't know that was a thing or like they didn't believe it. They thought carbs and fat were making you fat rather than just overall calorie intake. So now the, the baseline knowledge of the game online People know that macronutrients and micronutrients matter, but they don't always know how to achieve that. Like, yeah, the black and white, if we weren't human, if we didn't live an everyday life, macro is all that matters. But we're not machines. There's temptation. Temptation looming around every corner. I turn left, donut store. I turn right, McDonald's drive through with a McFlurry. Those are tough macros to hit, kids. I think people that have coached for a while or been in the game that are actually coaches understand that building the habits and the routine is what matters most. Now you're asking me what habit or routine matters most? I cannot say, because that's on the individual. What habits or what obstacles, we call them bottlenecks in business, what's the number one thing holding you back from hitting your macros? What's the number one thing hitting you, stopping you from doing it? Um, for me, it's, uh, it's uh, eating more processed foods that make me tend to eat more. And there's nothing wrong with the processed foods, but for me, they trigger me to want me to eat more. So building any routine that's your number one bottleneck, find out what it is, and then find the best way to allow you to stick to your routine that will get you to your ultimate goal. Ladies and gentlemen, if you made it to the end of the video, man, appreciate your Discord.
It's popping. Good company Discord. Goodcompanydiscord.com. Link in the bio. Uh, early top on this. We got some shorts. We got a bunch of fresh tees coming on the basics uh, line, um, and more hot shit on the way. The next designs for summer. Everything's popping. So tap in. We're mobilizing this year. Be a part of it. Be a part of something bigger in yourself. We over me. I'll see you at the Arnold if you're there. Say what's up to me. See Bass. We'll be cruising around with the camera. Um, Sunday we'll be at the USAPL. That's the only place I'm scheduled. We're watching uh, Avi smash some weights. So come out, support Third Street, good company. All the love you can show to Avi, man, is much appreciated. So Avilia Lou on, on uh, Instagram. Um, and if you're going to the Arnold, check her out. She's going to smash some big weights and really turn some heads. And I'll see you all there, man. Third Street Barbell if you're in Sacramento. Sell the mic. Catch you in the next one.